there in the back? The question was about the experience and the sound of the big calving event. Um, uh, Adam's not really. Um, uh, so Adam and I were the two guys camped out for three weeks. Um, that was a very long process. Uh, we brought a lot of books and we just, it, it also takes a lot of energy just to maintain camp life in those conditions and charging batteries and downloading memory cards and backing footage up and repeating all of that. Um, the two of us maintained a 24 hour vigil. So we had eight hours on, eight hours off, and then we're together away for eight hours. And um, that, that big event, it, I think the most special thing for me about it was the fact that Adam and I were the only two people there. And we felt like we were observing history, and we had our cameras there, and we just were making sure that all the cameras were running. Um, but it was a monumental event that was a very private and intimate event at the same time. Um, it does feel, what I, what I tried to do was to make it feel on the screen like it felt to us when we were there. And based, some locations are closer to the glacier than others, and so you can hear them better or worse at various locations. But for that scene, we used all the sound from our sound library of all the glacier calving events that we had recorded, and then also Skywalker had their library of ice sounds from various events that they had recorded. And added to that, we had a scientist who was doing seismo uh, seismography? Seismography. seismography, seismology, where he has basically the instrument that they use to measure earthquakes. And he had it located on bedrock very close to the glacier, and he records the waves of, of any action, any trembling or shaking on the planet. And he has recorded the waveforms of the ice breaking off. And so we took that information and we converted it to sound. And we used that in that section as well. So it's the actual sound. It's like a contact microphone on the, on the planet. It's the actual sound of the glacier that was being used uh, in terms of what we heard in that experience. I was wondering for the film in terms of audience engagement, uh, as you're taking this film and bringing it out to the world, uh, how should we as an audience feel like you can be a part of the movement? Awesome, that's a great question. Um, should I take that chance? Uh, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, the question was about audience engagement, and as, as we're taking the film out to the world, what, what can an audience do about that? Um, this is, Sundance has been our premiere, it's been the first time we've shared it with any audience beyond our core team, and so we're very, and we're very much in the early stages of assessing that and figuring out how we're going to engage publicly. Um, and right now we have kind of three ideas that we're developing, that will be kind of, you know, developed over the course of Sundance and beyond, but ways that we think people can engage with us and with the film. Uh, the first one is what James talked about is perception. The biggest issue around climate change, the biggest problem around climate change is perception. There are so many skeptics out there, and there's so much confusion out there, and it's very easy to create confusion. You just need to question one thing, and then you know, the, the argument they've been using on the skeptic side has been trying to discredit all the science because of small inaccuracies or small factual errors. So the, the biggest thing, I think, is really trying to help us shift perception by sharing the story, taking advantage of the work that we did, leveraging that, and sharing the story of the ice and how the planet is changing with your skeptic friends. We're thinking of creating a convince a skeptic campaign where you can actually, the one thing you can do, the easiest thing you can do is you know, show the film to a friend who's a skeptic and convince their perception. We already had a number of volunteers who saw the film last week who said to us that their perception of climate change changed just based on seeing the film. So that, that's kind of the leading, easiest thing. The second thing is, I, I looked at James as an inspiration and a role model for this, because as it says at the end of the film, he used the tools that he had available to him to make a difference regarding climate change. And everybody on our team has a different skill set and a different expertise, but we're able to leverage those skills to help make a difference in this area. And I would challenge everybody in this audience that everybody here has a skill that they are incredibly skilled at, that they're an expert at, something that they can leverage, even if it's Facebook or Twitter or things like that, you know, all of those things, social media is a skill. And if you can leverage whatever skills you have to make a difference in your daily life and in communicating with your friends, that's something that we all should be aspiring for for a matter of self-respect and nothing else. The last thing is, is supporting us and supporting the work of the Extreme Ice Survey and Chasing Ice. 
helping us get the film out there and have impact with education and outreach. We want to have the film reach as many people as possible, go to as many schools as possible. We really want to, we're doing a, a volunteer screening for two high schools on Thursday here in Park City. And every request that we've had for screening the film at high school, absolutely, we want it to be out there as much as possible. So you can support the projects financially through extremeisurvey.org or through chasingice.com and those ways that you can help directly. And I would add to that, uh, this occurred to me last night in the premiere as I was looking up at the leisure seats and it occurs to me again looking at, at all of you in here today. One of the distinguishing characteristics of Homo sapiens, presumably, is that we're storytelling animals. Those whales were too long to be saw that short at the beginning. It's kind of amazing to know. But storytelling is is something that we do through a certain kind of language or series of languages around the world. Birds tell stories, uh, chimpanzees tell stories to each other, and so forth and so on. But we have our own ways of telling stories. And the reason we're all at Sundance right now is because we're interested in storytelling. If all of you go home and you talk to your friends and your neighbors and your family and your coworkers and your kids and your parents and whatever, you're always telling stories. That's what we do all the time. We live and we breathe and we tell stories. So if nothing else, you don't want to get bogged down in the technology of changing light bulbs or, uh, or agitating with your, your senator, uh, at least tell stories. And we can all do that. And as Jeff said, disseminate the story. Tell the story. Tell what's really happening. Speak the truth to power because it is happening. Uh, we only have time for one or two more questions, so we'll take this one right here.
do. You know, that's the Oprah style. You know, tell me the one thing you do. <laughs> this is not a one thing process. It's not something that where, you know, if we don't do, do it by December 31st this year, the world comes to an end. No, this is a big, long, incremental process. We have to take a step, take another step, take another step, take another step. It never stops. Jeff, your analogy that you told me about this morning about so well, cigarettes, tell me about that. Yeah, and I, we are tight on time, but um, in response to people asking about a deadline and how long we have until this is irreversible, I, I think a good comparison is do you smoke cigarettes? You know, we know that smoking cigarettes is going to, has an increased chance of getting cancer. Are you asking how long can I smoke until I get cancer and I'm going to stop smoking the day before I get cancer? <laughs> like that's the argument that the skeptics are pretty much making. <laughs> Having that debate is, is not fruitful. It's a waste of energy, a waste of time. We need to just embrace the reality that cigarettes cause cancer and that CO2 causes climate change and we need to address the solutions.